Welcome into another edition of Spits and Suds, a trade edition of Spits and Suds. I'm Gavin Spittle of 105.3 The Fan, joined by EP Ringside, Shap Shots, D Magazine. The name of the book is We Win Here, and he loves you so much, Spits and Suds fans, that when this Chris Tanev trade came down, he said, let's do it, despite the fact that it is his wedding anniversary. So thank you to the misses of the Shapiro family for allowing this to happen. He's our NHL insider, Sean Shapiro. Happy anniversary, my man. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Yes, it is. Uh, well, it's, it's one of those setups where it's we're, we're going to celebrate later this evening. So I have definitely have time to talk some hockey with you during the day. But uh, as I was telling to you before we came on the show, uh, pretty happy that this went down last night <laughs> and uh means I should be calm for a little bit. I'll I'll watch the Dallas Winnipeg game tomorrow morning to catch up, but uh pretty much after we after we record the show and I uh, send a couple emails, it's uh I'm turning off the work brain for the rest of the night. Good for so. you. Good for you, my <laughs> friend. And we wanted to jump on and talk about this Chris Tanev trade. We were scheduled and will continue to have our regular Friday visit with Sean tomorrow. But anytime a star's trade or something big happens, we like to pop on and go over it so you guys have this as far as, you know, the ramifications and there's some really interesting uh, information. So let's just talk about the trade. The Dallas Stars acquire the the trade deadline target that a lot of teams were interested in. Defenseman, veteran Chris Tanev from the Calgary Flames. There was also a goalie involved, Cole Brady, who's currently at UMass. Calgary Flames receive Dallas Stars prospect Artem Grishnikov, the 2024 second round pick, a 2026 third round conditional pick and New Jersey was a third team involved because of the salary. So the stars went out and worked that deal and the stars will give a 2026 fourth round pick to New Jersey and New Jersey 50% retained salary for TANF for the rest of the year. So he can fit under the stars current salary cap. Your thoughts, Mr. Shapiro. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a big, like this is a, in, in, impeccable trade here like this is one of those things where we if you're you're jim nil it is this is the type of trade that we all knew that they were all kind of looking at chris tanov and i've reported it lots of others have and but to get for them to land tanov and to have it at this return the cost sorry the cost that it that it really didn't cost them is incredible business by Jim Neal. Um for me this is you didn't give much away. You traded away a second round pick. That's probably that's probably about fair value for what Tanev should have been. And the other pieces here, Gavin, and this is not to, I want to be clear to people because I saw some people on Twitter disagreeing with me on this, but not to be unfair to any other player or person or whatever. The other stuff's just not really that big of a deal. Right. Fourth round pick to New Jersey to hold salary. Okay. Fourth round pick. It's, it's fine. I, I don't really care. That's not a big deal. Um, a conditional third that only enters the deal if the stars are playing in the Stanley cup final. Guess what, Stars fans? If we're talking and the Stanley, the Stars are in the Stanley Cup final, you're not going to miss that third round pick. Neither are the Stars. And then the prospect going back, and this is the one where people kind of where some people disagree with me, and um, and I everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I don't really see Artem Grushnikov as much of a prospect either. He's he was a second round pick. Um, he's been okay for the Texas Stars this year in the AHL. Um, he. Um, like I was texting with our good pal, Stephen Meserve, my co-author, and I know who you've had on this show before. He's a beast. Um, yeah, I was texting with Stephen and Stephen and I were wondering, like, how is this the guy that Calgary said we want from the pool? Like, we knew the stars would be like, you're not. We knew the stars would come in and say, OK, we're not tra- trading uh, Maverick Bork. We're not tra- trading uh, Logan Stankov and we're not trading Liam Bixel. Um, but. I would have imagined, and, and those are really the only three stars prospects I think have major impact consequence possibility. Yep. Um, but for them to, for 
for the flames then, and I want to make sure I want to get this. I went through and, and pulled this up here. Um, the before the season started, um, the some of my colleagues at EP Ringside went through and ranked, um, did Ross prospect ranking pools of for every single NHL team. Um, and they, the stars had at the time of the 19th ranked prospect pool. Um, and, uh, they, they, they ranked the pool 16 deep. Grishnikov was their 16th ranked prospect. And that's like, it's, I mean, this is something where you could have had, if I'm Calgary and I came to the stars and said, I want, okay, I'm not going to get Bork, Bixel or Stankoven. I'm okay with that. But then my first response, if I'm Calgary is okay. Give me Christian Cairo. Yeah. Give me our ammunition or our ammunition or Artin Martino, like, or even like maybe even like a Matthew Semenov. Um, there's four name, four or five names um, that immediately pop to mind for me that are way more valuable and have a chance of actually being NHL players than Grishnikov. And so, for me, this is incredible work by the Stars because you traded possibly your worst prospect and all you really all it really cost you was a second round pick and that's the only consequence of this yeah and the double retention to get everyone's wondering like how are they going to make it work how are they going to make it work to get him in at a cap hit of 1.1 million with the flames holding half and the jersey new jersey holding the other 25 percent to get that done it also means that jim mill doesn't have to be done before march 8th that's the other that's the other wild thing about this trade gap. And like if you had told me the stars would trade for Chris Tanev, I would have been like, okay, that's cool. That's it. That's it. They're yeah. done. They don't have to be done now. They might be done, but they have the ability now in the next nine days or eight days, sorry, to monitor the market, see what else, see how prices go. And they could go get another defenseman. They could move, they, they could go get another defenseman to beef up that back end and because of how well they pulled the strings on this trade, it is it is for Jim Nill as far as deadline deals go. This is one of the best of his time in Dallas. I agree. Um, it's uh, I mean it's right up there with it's it's kind of uh, it's right up there with the Zuccarello trade from the beginning. And I want people to remember the Zuccarello trade is better than it gets remembered for oh. because the Zuc the Zuccarello trade had it. He only played two regular season games. He got hurt, literally broke his arm in game one, right with them. So the Zuccarello trade would be remembered around here a lot more, if not for the injury. So if we take just the trades, this and Zuccarello are the two best deadline deals. Nil has pulled off in yeah. his ten his tenure here. Yeah, I've never Zuccarello fit in seamless. It was amazing. It, it was like yeah. he was with the team all, all year. A couple uh thoughts, Sean. Yeah. Um one, I'm a little surprised Calgary pulled the trigger, and I wonder if Tanif might have had something to do with that. That might come out. Um just for the simple fact, as you mentioned, we're nine days away. And I yeah. wonder if they had held out if all of a sudden a second round pick would have turned into a first round pick for our team. So I want, I wonder that. And I wonder, um, you know, was there an urgency to move on? So that's kind of interesting. And Tanif had a modified no trade and it, that is a loose no trade contract, but yeah. it does once again, to me, signal that players do want to come to Dallas and play for this stars organization, which you have highlighted uh, which is a good thing. But you brought something up that I'm not seeing a lot on social media as far as TANF's availability based on coming into the country. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good, a good question because and we will see. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens because obviously a game against Winnipeg tonight. Um, one of the things that's going to impact the timing of this trade, and maybe and maybe the Stars could get it done tonight. It's possible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it will be. So uh, Jason um, Jason Raidman Stretch is the uh, Stars Director of Team Services, and uh, his department is to make sure everything goes smoothly, all the logistics. And one of the things is player visas. So this is a Canadian player who has never played outside of Canada, so he has never had an American uh, visa to work. So... The stars 
are going to um the stars have to get him a visa a sponsor a visa and get him to for him to be able to be eligible to work slash play in the united states and that's going to take they're going to they're going to work to expedite it they're going to go as fast as they can but it's going to be a real race against the clock in theory to get him into the game tonight so i've i it's going to be really interesting how that works out when he plays because of visa issues um to kind of give a quick backstory for everyone how this works if a player is traded from if a player is traded from one american team to another it's really easy like so like when matt zuccarello was traded because we brought his name up earlier when zuccarello was traded from the rangers to the stars he already had a work visa that the rain that literally came with he already had an american work visa um i believe it's called the b1 visa if i have my terminology right i'm talking off the top of my head here um this girl already had that visa that sent him that uh, that just transferred with the trade he never had as a canadian tanev never had to have a visa to play for the flames or the canucks during his career so he simply um so there's gonna there's some paperwork to get done here and uh It'll be interesting to see how quickly it gets done. One of the teams that is, there's a story of the uh, Mark Stone trade. Um, when Mark Stone got traded from the Ottawa Senators to the Vegas Golden Knights, one of the quickest, whoever Vegas has, whoever wherever Vegas has their in on the visa department is one of the quickest in the world because uh, Vegas traded for uh, Stone one night and then he literally played actually the next game ironically enough against dallas i remember i was at that game and there was people all around the league wondering who in the visa department does vegas know that they got this done this quickly so um it's one of those other little those little wrinkles of the game that the stars will be working on um i'm sure uh that that trade went through official trade call went through last night around 10 p.m. local time. Um, not many visa offices open at 10 p.m. So when offices opened at nine when 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 those offices opened at 9 a.m. Eastern in some places today, um, the Stars paperwork team has been busy at work today. So that's one of the what's one of the underlying kind of things to watch for when Tanev will actually be in the lineup for for the Stars here. So Chris Tanif is a right-handed defenseman, and mm-hmm. NHL Network put out, as we're taping this, Chris Tanif gives the Dallas Stars a new look on defense, and they put out their projected defensive pairings, and they have the first defensive pairing is Harley and Haskinen, the second, mm-hmm. Suter and Tanif, Essa Lindell and Hockenpah is the third pairing. Your thoughts? Um, I could see that happening. Yeah. I, I could see that happening. I think the the proper play here is to have. Um, I'm personally a fan of putting Tanev with 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 Heishkinen. I'd like to see um, Heishkinen on his strong side. I'd like to see that as my top pair. I'd like to see Thomas Harley kind of get that second pair, and uh, that kind of allows you to go. You can you can either do Lindell and and Harley, and then you can have a Suter Hockenpah third pair. That's kind of the way yeah. I look at it. Now you can easily see I, I'm fine with Harley and Heishkin and still playing together, but for one of the things we've been wondering, just all of us have been wondering is if you get Miro Heishkin and back on his strong side, how much better can he be? And that to me is the. Um, that's the experiment I would do first, especially with the other great thing about the stars of doing this. And it's the timing of this trade is you get 25 games to figure it out as opposed to 18 or 19 or whatever it would have been if you actually waited till the deadline. So this is to me, the NHL network there is probably not wrong, but I also think you have to think about Tanev with Heishkin to start. I agree. My perspective. I want to see, yeah. and listen, I said this the other night with David Castillo. I and please disagree with me, Sean. I love Haskinen as a player, but I think there's more there, and I would love to see him just to see if it makes a difference. Get in that comfort zone as far as being on that strong side. What I also saw in Colorado the other night was a team that was so desperate to flip out of their zone 
that they weren't really carrying the puck. Dropping Harley down to a second line gives you another excellent puck carrier. I get it. In a perfect scenario, those two together are great, and they're super talented. But I'm also thinking depth, and I want I want to see Harley, you know, I want to see puck carriers, you know, uh, on those top two defensive pairings. I agree. And, I, and Tanev is a guy who, um, one of the things that, that's great about Tanev, and people are going to look at his, his counting stats initially, the goals and the assists. He actually only has one goal. Ironically enough, uh, Tanev only has two goals in the last two years, and they both come against the Stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's he's not a goal scorer. That's, that's why we fine. got him. He's easy. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, but he is a. Uh, but he does make. He's a strong puck carrier out of the zone. A good pass first guy. Um, he is going to help the transition of this team, and I think he. I really think he will. He will play off whoever who he pl- he will play off well off of whichever pair he's on. Um, and I think that's something where having him with Hishkinen makes that pair better. And it also, I've noticed with Harley too, like Harley is a guy who likes a bit of that alpha attitude as a puck carrier. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. And I think Harley with, um, Harley with Lindell um, allows Harley to do that more too um obviously in a perfect world gavin like this defense is really good now like this defense has gone from i don't know to like i'm really happy about this defense too if the stars make one more move for another defenseman like can you imagine if say they go all in and take all the chips put all their chips on the table say they go all in and get a uh say they say they let the other top defender i like sean walker just hypothetically here you're like okay this has gone from questionable to great so it's questionable to very good to an elite defense so the stars still have the potential to do that and honestly i know for a fact the stars have had in talks with the flyers i know that for a fact i have no they still have their first round pick to give and they still have their first round pick to give and i also think now we'll see how philly holds out on this and if 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 i'm daniel briere i want to be smart and i want to wait this out but Dallas, if you're Jim Nill, you have second round picks in other years. You still have a bunch of other mid level prospects you can trade to the Flyers because you traded one of your worst ones. I, I, I wouldn't rule the stars out on getting Sean Walker, too. So. Oh, I mean, can you imagine that? Let's just throw it out. So let's just yeah. say first pairing, Haskin and Sean Walker, second pairing, yeah. Harley and yeah, uh, Tanif. And then third yeah, and pairing, then, and you it, have Suter and Lindell, and you have Hockenpah in case of injury, because you do mo- use more than six defensemen in, in the playoffs. So you know, well, you, yeah, I, I, looked, I looked this up the other. I looked this up the other day, Gavin. The uh, so just out of curiosity, you see the two teams that um, the last two years. I didn't. I don't want to. I didn't want to go to COVID years because or the, I didn't want to use the Tampa years before because there was still a lot of COVID restrictions and stuff. But the last two years when we've had normalized injuries no random taxi squads covid stuff or whatever um when the avalanche won the cup they used eight defensemen in that playoff run when vegas won the cup last year they used seven you're going to it's just the nature of the sport you're going to need to go seven or eight deep in the playoffs and right now um and so if yanni hakapa is your seventh coming in i'm elated with that idea yeah I i think the other thing real quick before we let you go is I like what Tanif brings to the room um, the other night. What I love about Logan Stankoven is is we see the point production in the minors. Mm-hmm. But there are those little things, and, and people like 100 Degree Hockey and David Castillo pointed it out with some videos. I love the grit, especially in the corner, and just kind of the wheels turning. And Craig and I were talking the other day, I think he has a lot more talent potential than Brendan Gallagher. But the one thing about Brendan Gallagher is just a pest and really worked and freed pucks up, and he was always in the right place at the right time before injuries kind of have taken a toll. But at the same time, like, I love that. And Wyatt Johnston, same thing the other day. The first goal against Colorado was produced by effort, and I love that. And I think Tanif can also set an example for other players as far as how he gets in front of uh, pucks, how he blocks shots. He can exert his physicality. Um, And I just, there, there are, 
various ways that you can show grit on the ice. And I think Tanif brings a lot of that. Yeah, it's, uh, he brings a ton and it's this room. There was never any question about the stars room. Um, but this is just, uh, this just makes a stronger room stronger. Yeah. Right. Like you, you have this, you have this guy comes in and this is the type of player that brings the experience, brings a lot of those other things. And it also, you're bringing a guy in that you comfortably feel like if we make another move, he kind of helps, uh, can help, like, can kind of be a nice little buddy slash source, whatever, for whoever else comes in to make sure it works as well. Mm-hmm. So it is, uh, it's it's a great move. So. Yeah. And we're talking about a guy that's heading toward his mid thirties and doesn't have a cup. So, yeah. you know, well, that... it's the, I mean, the stars already were like the stars already were the old, uh, old yeah. guys without a cup, like favorite, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, true. As long as you've got like, it's now like people, if you're a fan base, that's out of the playoffs, it's going to be, the stars are going to be one of those like kind of teams that it's easy to root for because, I saw Calgary fans after the trade happened being like, oh man, like, like go, go win one for Tanev. Like, you, like it's kind of one of those where like all of a sudden the stars now are that team where you're like, I, there's a lot of guys on this team who have had really good NHL careers. I, I want to see him finally get that, get that win. So yeah. it just adds to that. It adds to that factor too. No, it, it certainly does. And we'll talk more tomorrow about some other possible trade targets. I do want to get into a, a Philadelphia buying or selling conversation with Sean, yep. but I do want to let him go because it's his anniversary. <laughs> My friend, I know all the spits and suds faithful. Thank you very much for popping on. And I think this is a lot of information. Remember, will we see Winnipeg? Uh, will we see Tanif in Winnipeg tonight? Depends if visas are approved. I, uh, I actually, I think since we've been going on this, yep. I don't think I actually, I think uh, we've got an update. He's not going to play. Okay. Not playing visa tonight. stuff. So, so hope the hope is Saturday, but maybe next week for sure. Yeah. The question is really, will he be in by Saturday because of the visa? It's yep. really the big question. That, that's now. great so. info as it continues to, you know, as we say, as we're doing this, the information yeah. continues to come in. So I appreciate that update. Huge tilt tonight against Winnipeg at the AAC. And Sean will be back tomorrow to recap it with myself. And we'll talk trade. And we'll also go around the NHL. So much happening right now. And thank you for sticking with us on Spits and Suds. We'll talk to you soon.